When you enter the Choo Choo Barn, the first thing you see is something very unique for a model railroad, a baseball game. Tom has even outfitted the home team with Choo Choo Barn uniforms. It's the bottom of the ninth. The pitcher's in the stretch and the winning run is on third base. Will he score? Well, that's up to you. Let your imagination be your guide. They can even play night games here now that the new lights have been installed. Right next to the ball diamond is a nice little city park. There's a playground here for the kids, and the adults are listening to a great band concert on the lawn. This huge fountain is a recent addition to the park, and it's a real eye-catcher at night. Perhaps the most impressive attraction at the park is the Hall of Presidents. Just down the road from the Ball Diamond in the park is the Train Town Zoo. Like so many things on the Choo Choo Barn layout, this zoo started very small. But today, the zoo is much larger and even has a little train running around the perimeter just for the zoo visitors to ride on. The zoo is a real show place with lots of animated scenes. And it's the little animated scenes that make this layout so special. Tom has spent thousands of hours designing, building, and installing over 150 animations all around the layout. We don't normally see police officers in the zoo parking lot, but in this case, I'm glad he's here. He's giving the owner of this fancy yellow convertible a parking ticket. Maybe the owner will think twice before he takes up two spots in the lot again. Some of the animated scenes on this layout are pretty cute and a little complicated. For example, out in the backfield, this farmer's got a problem with a groundhog. Every time that critter rises up out of his hole, the farmer gets ready to plug him. But that old groundhog is just too fast for him, and he always ducks out of the way before the farmer can get off his shot. Speaking of coming up out of a hole, this guy's doing some work underground, and the trolley just misses him as he comes up out of that manhole. Wow, that was close! The traffic out on the country road is stopped for a moment as the school bus makes a stop to pick up the kids on their way to school. After school, several of the boys love to hang out here in this neat little treehouse. They're trying to get their dog up into the treehouse, but things don't seem to be working out too well. I hope the boy trying to grab the dog doesn't fall out of the treehouse. It's a special day on the farm. A brand new tractor's being delivered today. Looks like he's a deer fan. This little scene is one of the most complex custom-built animations on the layout. Be sure to watch the rollback sequence on this DVD to see how Tom built this. This young man is flying his model airplane in front of the farmhouse. Maybe he's dreaming of becoming a pilot someday. Overhead, a real aircraft circles the farm. There are so many of these wonderful animations around the layout that the Choo Choo Barn Model Railroad absolutely sparkles with life. The area around Strasburg, Pennsylvania is Amish country, and the Choo Choo Barn layout would not be complete without an Amish barn raising. While the men are busy at work on the new barn, the women are busy preparing the afternoon meal. The horses that brought all these folks here wait patiently until it's time to head home again. Just as in the real Strasbourg, 
It's common to see an old-fashioned Amish barn alongside a modern highway bustling with traffic. Back closer to town, there's construction of another kind going on. These carpenters have just started framing in a new house, while up on Cherry Hill Road, the general contractor and an electric utility crew are working on a new brick home. The pile driver is doing its thing over here, while the backhoe operator is digging a trench for the new plumbing hookup over here. They had to clear a lot of brush from this lot to make room for the house. This dozer operator is shoving some of the brush and wood over the side of the hill to get rid of it. Nearby is a construction project that's all finished. The congregation at the local church just finished replacing all the stained glass windows in the church. Aren't they beautiful? The folks who live in this ranch home finally decided to fix the roof. New homes mean more people, and more people means more traffic. There's a major repaving operation underway on the main drag into town, and it's a big project. The paving company has amassed a lot of equipment on this site in order to get the job done as quickly as possible. Fresh, hot asphalt is being carefully laid on the road right next to the ballpark. The new road base is being graded here. The paving guys will get to this section tomorrow. This project even includes a new water line, replacing an older, smaller line. New street lights are also part of the project. These fellows are installing new decorative street lamps, replacing all these older, worn-out lamps. This road runs right next to the main line, and the traffic there never stops. In addition to all the paving work, the road crew also has to protect this busy railroad crossing. Over on the east side of town, all the river road traffic has been detoured over to Route 846 because the electric company is stringing some new lines along River Road. Tom often adds personal touches to the layout in tribute to family members. Tom has dedicated this scene to his son, Kevin. Kevin is getting a ticket from a Strasburg police officer, and the scene is in honor of the number of speeding tickets that Kevin received when he first started driving. Just beyond the construction zone, there are some sharp-looking cars parked along River Road. I wonder what's going on. Oh, I see. A few of the local hot rodders are taking advantage of the now deserted road to have a little fun. Most of the fellas doing the racing bring their cars here when they need gas or repairs. The Strasburg Auto and Cycle Center has a great reputation around these parts, which is why they're always busy. They must do good work. One of the reasons there is so much construction going on is because there's a lot of good jobs in the imaginary world of the choo-choo barn. Here's the largest employer on the railroad. This is the Dole Stone and Gravel Company's huge gravel pit just outside the city limits over on the east side of town. This huge gravel pit is one of the largest animations on the layout. Tom spent hundreds of hours building and perfecting this huge scene. The highlight of the quarry operation is this animated clamshell crane that picks up the gravel from the base of the pit and puts it into this hopper. The gravel is then sorted by size, cleaned and readied for shipment to customers, all by rail, of course. Modeling things from real life around Strasbourg is another unique aspect of the choo-choo barn layout. For example, here's the Dutch Haven gift shop located just a little east of Lancaster on busy U.S. Route 30. The traffic on the miniature Route 30 looks pretty busy too, and I'll bet this model of the Dutch Haven sells as many shoe fly pies as the real thing. Longtime visitors to Lancaster County will remember this building. This is the Willows Restaurant, and not too long ago it was the place to eat in Lancaster County. People came from miles around to enjoy good food, good times, and make lots of memories. 
Here is another major Lancaster County attraction, Dutch Wonderland. The real park is also located along Route 30, just east of Lancaster. This popular amusement park draws thousands of visitors every year. The Choo Choo Barns model of Dutch Wonderland is another of Tom's amazing animated scenes. Starting with this main building, which is a work of art in itself, there is a lot to see here. This monorail whisks passengers around the park and shares a bi-level station with another little train that runs around the park. Inside the park there are amusement rides. There's even a cable car that gives folks an aerial view of the park. Uh-oh. Looks like this fella didn't quite make it into the parking lot before he had a little trouble. I hope he gets that flat tire fixed soon. Some folks come a long way to visit the Choo Choo Barn in Dutch Wonderland, and they've got to have a place to stay. The Red Caboose Motel in Strasbourg fills the bill for the real people, and the imaginary visitors to the Choo Choo Barn Railroad stay at their own motel of the same name. Tom has chosen to model the Caboose Motel the way it was originally, when all the cabooses were painted the same. It might have been tough to pick your favorite caboose back then, but it's certainly easy to pick your favorite railroad the way the cabooses are painted now. Just like the real Caboose Motel, the Strasbourg Railroad runs right past the motel. Tom's model of the Strasbourg Railroad is a masterpiece of automated train operation. The model runs just like the real railroad in every way. When the train arrives at Lemon Place, the locomotive uncouples from the train, runs around the train in the siding, then couples onto the other end of the train for the return trip back to Strasbourg. This uncouple and runaround process is repeated at the Strasbourg station. The train pulls into the station, the locomotive uncouples and pulls ahead to the switch, and then the locomotive backs up to the water tank to take water. After a brief pause to fill the tank, the locomotive moves back to the switch at the other end of the station and moves back in to couple to the train for the next trip. All this marvelous operation happens automatically and the Strasbourg Railroad makes hundreds of trips on the Choo Choo Barn layout every day. There's one more real building on the Choo Choo Barn layout, but you won't find this one along Route 30. No, this one is sort of special because it's a model of Tom and Linda Groff's home. Sure looks comfy. Another way in which the Choo Choo Barn layout tries to create realism is in the way the trains operate. For example, here's a westbound Reading freight train heading into the passing siding to wait for a meet with the eastbound Amtrak train. The dispatcher's doing a great job of keeping the trains moving because only moments after the freight stops here, the big Amtrak diesel roars out of the tunnel and on east towards its destination. Then, only moments after the passenger train clears, the Reading Freight is rolling west again. Life on the railroad is busy and fast, but over on the edge of town, there's another baseball game going on. This is just a sandlot game with some of the guys from the neighborhood, but even they have a little problem. It seems they don't want to let any girls play in this game. One of the local police officers just happened to drive up to watch a little of the game 
and one of the girls who wants to play is pleading her case with the officer. Somehow I don't think it'll do much good. The Boy Scouts are camping out tonight near the old grist mill. The creek near the grist mill is one of many places where Tom has used real water on the layout. There's just no substitute for the look of real water cascading down a small rapids like this. Over in the freight yard near the coal chipel, they're replacing some old rail in the yard. Now this is a small yard and it's kind of tight over here. Even so, trains still make regular stops here every day. Gotta keep the equipment clean, and this guy's doing his part. At the west end of the coal yard, over by the old passenger station, a small group of guys is working on an old steam locomotive. They hope to be able to restore it and pull a special excursion with it every once in a while. That steam locomotive sits close to the old passenger station. Years ago, this station was quite busy, but now it hasn't been used in years. The railroad hasn't bothered to tear it down, but if they don't do something with it soon, it's going to fall down all by itself. It took a lot of time and effort to make this old station look like this. It's just one of hundreds of structures on this layout that have been scratch built by Tom or his father. Have you ever heard the term, head for the barn? These cows on the dairy farm evidently know about it because they're doing just that, heading for the barn at the end of a long day. The area around Strasbourg is Amish farm country with some of the nicest looking farms you'll ever see. This farmer does some planting as well as managing a few head of dairy cattle. Even with all these marvelous little details to enjoy, the trains are what tie all the scenes together, and there are a lot of them to see here. Rail traffic is really moving on the Choo Choo Barn layout, but the highway traffic has come to a stop over here on Route 741. I wonder what's wrong. Oh, here's the reason for the traffic jam. There's been an accident. Don't get too worried, though. We, we checked with the hospital, and the accident victim will be okay. Just minor injuries. Near the accident scene, in the midst of the traffic jam, a sign crew is using a mobile crane to put up a new billboard. And right behind that billboard, you'll find K&J Hobbies, the local hobby shop. In another family tribute, K&J Hobbies happens to be named after his daughter and son-in-law, Christy and James. The trucking company just dropped off some new product here, but they left the boxes in the parking lot. Here's the main passenger station on the Choo Choo Barn layout, and it's a busy place. Trolleys come and go on the trolley line. While out on the main, Amtrak passenger trains make regular stops. The conductor on the passenger train, who calls out the real names of nearby towns, sounds like he's anxious to get going. 
Lane number 68 to Thaddeus Stevens, departing at 2 p.m. For Fairview, West and Shade, Cherry Hill, Grass Grove, Carpenters, Pilers Crossing, Lemon Place Junction, and Paradise PA. What? The station has an escalator inside to move people up to the platform. And there's even a rail fan with a camera taking pictures of all the action. Just east of the passenger station, behind this chain-link fence, is a rather strange outfit. The company is called the Who's It and What's It Manufacturing Company, but that doesn't tell us very much. Peeking down into the skylight, we can see that they load heavy crates into boxcars, but nobody seems to know just exactly what they do. Now here's an interesting sidelight about the Who's It's and What's It's Manufacturing Company. When Tom was painting the sign for this building, he had it all finished and accidentally put a little blue blemish on the sign at the top. Instead of getting upset about it, he decided to fix the problem by putting a sign painter up on the roof. We'll let him fix it. Turkey Hill is a large convenience store chain that is very popular in this part of Pennsylvania. Using plans supplied by the Turkey Hill Company, Tom built an exact replica of a Turkey Hill store, complete with this lighted fuel price sign. Tom can change the prices on the sign and keeps them in step with the real world gas price. There are a lot of beautiful homes on the Choo Choo Barn Railroad and... Wait a minute! This house is on fire! Somebody call the fire department! That was close. Good thing the firehouse is right down the block. The crowning achievement in animation on the Choo Choo Barn layout is this huge circus scene, which takes up the entire south end of the layout. Tom has pulled out all the stops here with tiny animated scenes everywhere you look. Like almost everything on this layout, the circus wasn't always this big. Many years ago, the circus was nothing more than a little tent in the corner of the layout. But today, the circus itself is huge, and the scene also includes this amusement park. This Ferris wheel is yet another example of Tom Groff's stunning ability to scratch build. Yes, he built this Ferris wheel from scratch, and even its drive mechanism is just like the real thing, with a long cable running around the perimeter of the wheel. Tom also scratch-built this ride, the Scrambler. Inside the big top, the action is non-stop.
Don't miss Choo Choo Barn's Christmas layout, a merry makeover of our gigantic model train display. Search for our hidden Santas tucked around the 22 moving trains and 150 animated figures and scenes, complete with festive lights and decorations. The Choo Choo Barn Christmas display open the day after Thanksgiving through the end of the season. See how many Santas you can find. This huge display of Lancaster County in miniature is an absolute delight, but there's even more. Inside the Strasburg train shop, just a few steps from the Choo Choo Barn main entrance, you'll find a full-line hobby shop with almost anything a model railroader could ever want. And if you want a great meal after your visit, Isaac's Restaurant and Deli is literally right next door. The Choo Choo Barn is open seven days a week from April through December. Special group rates are available and tour buses are always welcome. The Choo Choo Barn is on Pennsylvania State Route 741, just east of Strasburg. You can't miss it. There's no doubt about it. The Choo Choo Barn is a magical miniature wonderland that all ages will enjoy. Stop by and see us soon. The Choo Choo Barn actually had very humble beginnings back in 1945 when my father returned from World War II to a two-year-old son, my older brother Gary. There was no master plan or great dream on my father George's part. He only wanted to bring joy to his little boy and also have a train set of his own that he didn't have when he was a child. The first train set, a $12.50 Lionel Scout set, became the first building block of what would eventually be our gigantic model train display. Just as hobbies grow, so do families. My sister Sue and I followed shortly after this first train set purchase, and we too became part of the train family of Strasburg. Each year, we would start to work on our platform right after Halloween so it would be ready for the Christmas season. My parents would then open the display up to friends, family, and neighbors who visited during the holidays. Since we lived only a block away from the Strasburg Elementary School, each class would walk down to our house one by one to see the trains. While growing up in Strasburg, our basement became quite a train mecca with homemade houses and mountains and something that was unique, animation. My father's first piece of animation was the ski slope complete with moving dime store skiers. This was followed shortly thereafter by a highway with two lanes of cars passing each other. Both of these animations are still on the Choo Choo Barns display today. When my brother was getting ready to go to enter college, my parents needed some extra money to help with the added expense. At the time, the concession stand at the Strasburg Railroad was manned by the Strasburg Lions Club. And being a lion, my father signed up. He passed an old red barn one block from the Strasburg Railroad on his way to help with the concessions and a light lit up in his head. He mauled this idea over all day and when he was finished with his duties, he went home and told my mother that he wanted to move the train display to the barn and charge admission, whereby helping with the added college costs. He found the owner of the red barn, leased it for one year on a trial basis, and the rest, as they say, is history. The Choo Choo Barn opened for business on Thanksgiving Day of 1961. The display was 500 square feet, and there were six trains and six animated scenes. Over the years, the display has grown to over 1,700 square feet, and we now have 22 operating trains and over 150 animated pieces. All the animations on the display are handmade from scratch by either my father or me. Many of my father's animations that he built during the 1960s are still on the Choo Choo Barn's display, but many of these early mechanisms have been rebuilt due to wear over the years. Most of the buildings on the display are also hand-built. The ones that aren't are slated to be replaced by new ones that I will design and build in the future. I am constantly upgrading and improving the layout, utilizing the newest landscaping materials on the market, the latest figures and vehicles available, and new scratch building techniques that I have perfected these past 50 years. The display is closed each winter and completely cleaned. 
We vacuum and dust every square inch, wash each car, and clean each figure. This is also the time that work becomes more enjoyable because this is when I design, create, and build new animations, buildings, and scenery to help improve the wow factor as you walk through the curtain. The Choo Choo Barn's layout, like many home train layouts, will never be finished. It has been and will continue to be a work in progress, expanding the artistry of model railroading. This is an area of my workshop that I use quite a bit. Uh, one of the things that I use a lot is my bandsaw, and it's a 10 inch throat bandsaw. I don't use uh, anything under normal circumstances that needs a bigger bandsaw. Uh, if I do need something that's a little bit bigger, my brother-in-law has a nice circuit, uh, table saw, so I go up and use that. Uh, I also have a, uh, a couple of different electric sanders. I also have a small bake oven here. Uh, that's for if I want to uh, paint something and then bake the paint onto the metal. Um, I'll put it in and set the uh, oven for maybe 250 or 300 degrees, let it bake for a couple of hours, and usually that paint gets really hard. Of course, my paint hood I use a lot, and I always have different projects going on. Here I painted some concrete blocks. They're actually they're celly castings. Uh, that are metal, uh, it's a lead-based metal, and I just use some uh, primer, gray primer on them, and they end up looking like concrete blocks. Got a couple of barricades here that I'll end up painting yellow. Uh, there's a little cement mixer, and I got a couple of mailboxes, r rural mailboxes that I'm going to uh, put on the layout. Got to just get, get some paint on them. Uh, also, the other thing I decided to do this year is to paint the Dutch Wonderland monorail blue. So here it is. It has two coats of uh, paint on and actually two coats of a of a uh, clear uh, a pot, uh, clear uh, acrylic covering on it. So that way if we get grease on our hands and then we get the grease on here, it'll be able to wipe off easier rather than trying to wipe it off of the paint. Uh, again, I use this section constantly. Uh, as you can see, I have my paints here, and uh, I have paints at other places, but uh, this is a great area of my, of my workshop. I want to show you about, uh, about the landscaping and how really how easy it is to do. Uh, I've mixed up a big container full of uh, my glue, which I had said before is a mixture of half carpenter's wood glue uh, and half wa water. It's about a 50-50 mix or a 60-40, you know, it depends on how thin they want to make it. And then I put a little bit of uh, soap in it, dishwashing soap, and again, like I said before, that takes the surface tension off of the water and allows whatever I'm going to put on here to soak right in. So basically I'm going to just take a, a uh, an old paint brush because trust me this is going to get ruined by the time I'm, I'm done here. And I start painting this on. Now it's going to soak in to the old landscaping because of that soap mixture that I added in there. Um, and what's going to happen here first is I'm going to lay a, a, uh, the groundwork of grass. And then after I get that done, after I get a big chunk of grass done, I'm going to go back over the whole thing and add weeds, and add some bushes, add some trees, uh, dirt, because grass is never always perfectly green, at least where we live. All right, now that's a pretty good sized section.
Now, I want to be careful with my glue pot, because last year, I spilled it. And that was pretty much a fiasco. So, I'm going to use, for this greenery, I'm going to use the uh, Scenic Express Summer Lawn Blend, which is a, a very nice blend of grass. A little spot I'm going to touch up a little bit. And sprinkle this on. It just gets sprinkled on. Now, to get underneath trees and to get into the hard, harder to get to places, I have a spoon and I just get a little bit on the spoon and sprinkle with the spoon. Now, after this is all done, I'm also going to take a, uh, a vacuum cleaner and go back over everything, like I did on the roof of Dutch Winterland, and pull off anything that's not going to stick. Uh, because all that's going to do in the future is make po uh, possibly a mess for if I have to walk on a section. Um, it's just going to make a mess. So there's the basics. There's the basic the, the, the groundwork for the ground. Now, what I'm going to do later, again, like I said, is I'm going to go down through, and I'll take my glue, and I'm just going to add a couple of pieces of, of uh ground foam or uh, get a section that will use even something a little coarser and just make little piles like this like it's a little flower garden okay now the way to make that make sure it's going to stick is just throw some glue on it Sometimes it's very hard to get this out of here. Now, before this is done, I'm going to go over that. And I'm going to put more there. I'll put some flowers in here. I have uh, little plantings that I can put in here. Some other colors because uh, you, want to, you don't want it to be all the same color. Okay, I'm back here at this Guernsey farm that I started yesterday uh, up in this one section. And I've already grassed a lot of it. Uh, uh, you can see up in here where I've really detailed this bank uh, using just all kinds of different ground foams and, and different textures because I love the thickness. I like to have the 3D effect of, of, of uh, weeds and of trash. There's a little rock up here and came down through here with my grass and when I got to the house here uh, I noticed this porch and the porch that this is actually a, uh, a little stone area that my dad built years ago and what that was is actually a piece of vinyl tile and he cut it to fit in here and it's been on there since 1961 well after uh, 50 years I guess it's these people are do for a, a fix up since they're getting the landscaping let's give them a little bit of hardscaping also so what I did was I made a template of the area with a piece of cardboard first I took the the old piece laid it down here cut it out so it would fit in here and I had already dug all this out because this is kind of where I wanted my hardscape to be I laid this on here took my finger and scored this so I knew how far to make it so then I went over into, a, into the hobby shop and I uh, looked around for a while and I grabbed a piece of this mosaic tile paper by a company called K&P Brick and Building. Uh, it's a, it just makes it's just a, a nice brick mosaic finish. So I took a compass and made an arc, made this, have this all cut out. Then I glued it to a piece of cardboard so it would be a little bit stiffer. I just used a, uh, you know, the standard spray adhesive. Uh, this is an Elmer's spray adhesive. Uh, cut the cardboard out. And now I've got my hardscape. So what's going to happen is the hardscape porch is going to just lay right in here. 
And then I'm going to put a little picnic table. I got a little grill to set here. And then I'll finish this all in here with some grass the whole way down around here. I'll probably I'll edge this. And I'm going to put some plantings along here also, like I have here. And if you notice how dark this all is, I'm going to show you in a couple of minutes in a couple of minutes on how to get some plantings in there and what I use for planting. Okay, I'm going to uh, landscape around here, around my little rock. I cut this out yesterday, um, uh, and then I put my coffee grounds in here. And that's exactly what this dark brown is, and that's my mulch. Uh, I started collecting coffee grounds last year, and I've got bin upon bin upon bin of different, actual different colors of coffee grounds, because each coffee manufacturer makes different colors. So I've got light brown, dark brown, and I keep all this stuff. As a matter of fact, you can see that I really get into a lot of different landscaping materials. These come from, a, a lot of these items are actually from a, uh, a place called the Craft Warehouse up in Blue Ball, Pennsylvania. And I go in there and I'm probably one of the few males that walk around the area. And I'm constantly looking for small flowers, small things that I can use as plantings on the layout. Uh, and then I'll take them and I'll, I'll cut them apart because these are real big long pieces that are all put together uh, for to make to make uh, artificial flower arrangements. This first to get the correct size bit, and uh, I want to use these. I made these last year. These are little bushes that I made. Uh, these came on a big about a foot square pad, and there were thousands of these little guys and I cut them all off I actually took these and put a nail down through them dipped them in landscaping glue the kind that comes from Woodland Scenics their scenic glue because it's a plastic type glue that sticks to plastic I dipped it in and then I took my grasses different colors of grasses and sprinkled on took a and put those on a piece of wood and I have I had a couple of thousand of them actually after some of them dried I took them again and dipped the tips in to uh, Scenic Express, or put, put them back into the same glue, and then tip, tip these with the Scenic Express flowers so it looks like a bush with flowers on the end. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to just put a couple of these in here. Very simple matter. Drilling a hole, getting a little glue on the end. Doesn't have to be a lot. And gluing him in. So now, if I want to, if I want to say that the the farm lady likes red, I'll put a couple of red ones in. And as you can see, hooray for cordless drills. If they weren't cordless, I'd have a cord and I'd have that everywhere. That cord would be just a mess. So anyway, there's a couple of little you know, small bushes. Now, I'm going to also take these, which again, were on a big long stick. I'm going to do is get the wall I also go to uh, Michael's and AC Moore and I'm constantly going through their dried flower arrangements so there's there's a little white flower. You know, I don't know what kind of a flower it is. It's just a flower. Now, what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to do the same basic idea of this by just putting some glue down. some new pat batch of glue because I used all my glue yesterday. 
And I'm going to take my nice dry coffee grounds. Sprinkle them. And I'm going to let that sit. I'll, I'll just let that sit until tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll vacuum up what didn't, what didn't uh, get stuck. And it looks like mulch. And then I'll be able to put a few little bushes, a few little plantings to make it look like a nice little landscaped area. The same thing with here. I'm going to add some more here of uh, taller things here behind the, the sunflowers. first thing I did here with my school bus is, I, as you can well see, I added headlights uh, by, by drilling out uh, the front of the bus. Okay, drilling out the front of the bus. Used uh, my super jet to glue them in first. Then I used uh, epoxy that uh, I put across here to keep any light from that uh, LED from shining down underneath the bus. Then... What I did was I drilled out on the bus. I drilled out the. I gotta get these wires out of the road. The the, the lights at the top, the two reds and the two yellows, on the back and on the front. Added a couple of kids. Added a bus driver, and uh, I then. Ran all my wiring back across the roof so I can kind of try and hide the wires down underneath the bus. So this will come down the side of the bus, uh, and then I will hide all that so that nobody sees it. When I put everything back together again, here, I'll put the doors back in. And uh, so I'll show you what everything looks like right after I get everything put back in. A couple of years ago, I was lucky enough to be able to discover uh, that uh, there's a company called Dubro, and they make all kinds of uh, linkages and uh, control line hookups for um, the radio control airplane hobby. And uh, so what I did was I threw my distributor that we buy from through the Choo Choo Barn. I bought a card of each of what they had, and... Uh, put them in this little plastic case and I use these items now quite a bit uh, especially these little things called easy connectors they're very nice for uh, for, for what I do in, in with animation and uh, I am able to use a couple of these pieces here I also found through uh, one of my uh, electronic distributors they had hardware and the hardware I'm talking about are little right angle mounting pieces uh, that I use all the time. They had different sizes, um, and so I bought a, a sampling of everything they had, and I've been using them on animations for 10 years or so. So what I would need, what I'm going to need to, for the front <coughs> is right across the front of the school bus here. There's always a bar, and then when I when the uh, school bus comes to a stop, I want that bar to come out. Okay, I just it just has to come out one a 90 degree arc right here from here to here and the way I'm going to do that is this is actually a, a Dubro con, uh, steering control arm and it's already got holes drilled in it this is a 5 8 or a 5 30 second inch hole here so what I did was I first cut some 5 30 second brass piece put it in my little uh, unimat lathe and you can if you don't have one, you can always buy one on eBay, I'm sure. I can't imagine anybody doesn't have hobby lathes for sale used. I was able to buy one from a from a gentleman who upgraded and uh, didn't pay much for it. And I've used it, I even used it uh, a number of years ago to make little baseball bats. Um, anyway, I, I line board a 1 16th inch hole down through uh, this piece of brass. And from that... What will happen is 
the uh, the uh, uh, the piece that gets put down into that uh, hole will be actually the arm that comes up out from underneath the layout that the bar across here is going to be fastened to. Now, I ended up taking my little court, my little uh, right angles, and I fabricated a piece that was ended up being like a Z. Used some Dubro collars. One I soldered onto here. <laughs> that is my pivot. Used one at the bottom. Used the, con the steering control at the top. And if I turn this, as you can see, what will happen is it will turn this piece of brass. Therefore, this piece of brass here. Therefore, my little gate, my little arm that's going to stick out in front here of the school bus. All right, while I made one, I figured I might as well make a couple of them because uh, I've used them actually a couple of places on the layout already. So I already knew how to make those. Um, then what I had to do is I had to sit down and, and decide exactly how this all was going to work out. And uh, sat down, used my geometry again and figured out that uh, uh, to, to make this all work, this is what I needed to do. Um, what I decided to do is use a, a Circuitron Tortoise slow motion uh, switch machine. And the way these work is, if you give them positive, negative one way and hold it, this little arm goes one way. If you reverse that polarity, the arm is going to come back and it'll hold that way. And it, uh, it will work real nice, nice and slow. And what I ended up doing is putting a, a little extension. I don't know if you can see my little extension here. Use some more of the, uh, the Dubro pieces here. There's a, du there's a ball link, piece of threaded rod, and then that gets hooked up over here. Henceforth, through the layout. This will get all screwed to the bottom of the layout. My little uh, it's 1 16th inch piece of brass rod over here with the arm going across. This will get brought up under the layout. This will be put right here in front of the school bus. And it's going to work. Now, I also then said, I, I you know, sat down and said, okay, now to make this all work automatically, what do I got to do? So I sat down, I made up a schematic diagram, electronic schematic diagram using a couple of relays and uh, one of my little flasher units, uh, some relays here, uh, the and put everything on the board. So all I got to do is hook up some wires here, give me some power, hook up my LEDs over here so that when the school bus is sitting, it's just doing nothing. All of a sudden, the yellow lights will flash, will be, which are the two inside ones. Then the red lights flash, the yellow ones go off, and as the red lights start to flash, the bar comes out. And that's how exactly how a school bus actually works. Then after the kids finally get on the bus, the bar start comes back. When the bar comes back, then the red lights will go off, and it'll sit and wait for a little while. I found a really slow, slow RPM motor to run all this and uh, that's what my next thing is now is to get that little drum, my little drum working and uh, I'll show you how that works out. Okay here's the school bus. Uh, you're gonna have to excuse all the wires that are down in here. Um, obviously they're gonna go down through the display down underneath to all the electronics that are actually on a board that is uh, down right now, I have it actually down here. It's actually clamped down below here. And hooked to that is my little bar that goes across the front of the bus. Um, <clears throat> on here on the left side, which will also be uh, under the display, is my little what I want to call my drum unit, which works on the same principle as the fire scene at the Choo Choo Barn. With uh, these, This is rotating. And it's going to hit these little micro, these little micro switches. So it's coming up here very soon. So I want you to see what's going to happen. There you can see the yellow light start to light. And shortly thereafter, the red light start to flash. And the bar goes across in front. Then everything stops. Bar goes back, red lights shut off. And again, it's all because of my little drum unit over here. <clears throat> I actually laid in bed last night when I 
got in bed and I thought to myself, how can I do this without the drum unit? And I think I could have done it with a couple of, t of my little uh, Ultronic timers. Uh, and maybe I will change that at some point in time so that I'm using timers instead of the little drum unit with the motor. Uh, <clears throat> but for now, I'm going to use the little drum unit because it works. Next time you see it, it's going to be on the layout. playground that's right up here at that campground needs to be taken out because the one seesaw is not working and I don't like that. But the way to get up there is way down here. So I'm going to just get up. i got to walk the whole way up through here to get to it. And uh, I had already unhooked it underneath. I unhooked all the cable or the wire, the 110 volt wire is pretty long. And uh, this will end up going home, unless I can fix it here, but I doubt it. And that's what the playground looks like out of the layout. And this is the underneath part. And this is the part that needs re restarted. So I'm going to head out of here. I finally got my rollback finished. It took a lot more time than I had ever anticipated, but you know what? I think it's going to be worth the the, uh, the time invested. Um, as you can well see, you know, the, everything from here up is what you're going to see on the layout. From here on down, you're never going to see that except for in this video. And I'm going to show it to you in a couple of minutes exactly how this whole thing works. Uh, it, it was a lot of fun. It's uh, again, it was a, a heck of a challenge. There was a, there's a lot of wiring that had to be done in here, a lot of design work. I redesigned that schematic, I think, about 15 times, and kept finding mistakes on it every time I'd wire it up. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uh, it's just a regular little rollback. Now I want to show you also this little tractor. The tractor is actually a hallmark ornament from 2013. When I saw that at the Hallmark store, I said, got to have that, because that's a perfect 143rd scale little tractor, and that's a gorgeous tractor, and it ro it rolls perfectly. So that made a good candidate for rolling off of a rollback. Now, I also decaled it for a local towing company here in Cochranville. Uh, Knowles Towing in Cochranville is going to be part of the Choo Choo Barn display from now on. But as you can see, there's a lot of different, you know, a lot of relays. There's a big motor that actually has to lift all this weight up. Uh, there's uh, uh, two smaller motors, and that's what lifts the bed up. One lift moves the tractor back. Uh, I want you to come see this, obviously, but I'm going to show it to you. I'll explain a little bit to you on how it all works. And here it goes. As you can see, the bed and the tractor have to go down at the same time. Then the bed stops, but the tractor has to keep on moving. When the tractor gets down to the bottom, everything stops. There's a timer times out. And then everything kind of reverses with the tractor moving back up again. Then the bed and the tractor moving up. So it gets to the very top. You've got to give the operator a little time so he can move the levers. And then down she goes. So here's what makes it work. As you can see, this big circle is a piece of plexiglass on this motor. 
it moves this whole unit up, which I explained to you before on the one of my other videos. When this micro switch up here is clicked, it stops and starts a timer. These two now have to turn. The first one turns and leaves the string loose to let the bed go down. Then this pulley here turns and allows the tractor to get down. Everything is done with micro switches, relays. As you can see down here, I actually have little sinkers on a string. That string is tied, goes up through here, around that pulley, around that pulley, and way up through here to pull the bed down. I couldn't rely on gravity. Okay, now everything is reversing. Everything gets to the top, starts, starts another timer. This turns. When it gets down to the very bottom, the motor shuts off because the bed is down. Timer times out again, and everything starts up again. And again, as you see, if you can look real close back, way back here, I actually have a two ounce sinker, or actual, an actual fishing sinker. I don't know if you can see it from there, right there. That is helping to pull everything down because it has to counterbalance all the weight that is way off center here. Otherwise, this wouldn't pull back far enough. I found that the hard way. It's all you know, it's all trial and error. So there it goes. And again, like I said, please come see it. You'll see it in person. But this way, you get to see what it looks like before anybody else. four weeks yet to go before we reopen for the season on March 10th so we have a lot of work here to get done uh, in the next four weeks uh, Mike's been doing a lot of you know most of all the vacuuming um, and uh, he's come around the one corner so right now he's working there where the uh, big uh, passenger uh, station is uh, right behind the mill and the Boy Scouts so what I want to do is I'm going to show you underneath the layout here a little bit what we do is um, take a lot of the panels off and to get underneath the layout we have certain places that have a creeper uh, just like you get underneath the car with and I'm going to kind of show you here and then we'll get underneath the layout to give you a little bit of a tour show you a couple of the animations I have extension cord this is my neck saver uh, if I'm going to be underneath there for a long time I gotta use that so away we go and I lay on my back and we just I just scoot around Okay, here we are under the layout. Uh, over behind, over here to my left, is where the circus end is. Right over top of me is the Memorial Day Parade. Uh, it's run by a big motor and with chain, uh, chain guide. Um, if, you'll, if you notice, there's a lot of places that be, these little uh, terminal strips hang down with wires already hooked up to them. I, re, I did that back in... Uh, in November, I had to wire everything for the Christmas layout, and uh, that stuff's all hanging. It's ready for next year, and I I wired up every house in case I decided to do something in the future while I was wiring one. I might as well do them all. Um, over on that side is actually uh, where the one set of fish are with the, with the big aquarium. Dutch Wonderland's over here to my right. The fire scene is actually down this way and you can see there's a big silvery thing hanging down from the layout that is actually the ladder and the guy that goes up the ladder that's the unit when we get down there closer we'll get a little bit better video of that um, but I want to head over to where the Amish barn raising is to show you how that all works we're underneath the 
Amish barn raising scene right here. And uh, the Amish barn raising gets a lot of questions as to how we make those uh, guys actually hammer. And there's actually seven separate motors for the guys hammering. Each one hammering has its own motor, so if one of the motors goes bad or a linkage breaks, it doesn't take out the whole effect. Uh, over on this side, there's uh, uh, the guys that are sawing are here, and there's another guy hammering here. Um, I'll show you with my extension cord exactly how it works. Each one of the motors has a plug, and it gets hooked up to a plug strip that we have. So I'll pull that plug out and plug in the one animation. It's, it's going to be this one here, if you can get there, if you can see that. It's a simple matter of a, of, a, of, a, of a cam moving an arm, okay, moving, then moving that little rod. The rod goes up and down, and once the rod goes up and down, uh, it, it's hooked to his, uh, the armsman's arm, and that makes him hammer. I've often had a lot of comments made uh, regarding the wiring that's underneath here. Well, uh, all the wiring that you see all throughout this layout that you can actually see uh, little pieces of wire here and there is all low voltage wire stuff like this with a with a cord is 110 volt that goes all over to a a, a a receptacle at some place and then that's all in trough all in pipe and all up to code the low voltage is all going to be under 24 volts uh, actually it's mostly all 12 volts and under because most all the trains run under 12 volts and then uh, all my signaling all the, uh, the lighting is 12 volts and under um, so you know there's no worry with that this is going to give you an idea of what's underneath here and this is this is how I work on this I and mean, this is how everything has to be done under the layout uh, sometimes it's uh, not so fun to get under here, especially if I'm dressed real nice, because this all gets dirty. But uh, this is how it's all done, and it's you know it's just the way it is. Uh, I got lighting, I got car lights all over the place, and I've been doing a lot of relighting of cars, so you're going to see a lot of new car lights. That's what one. This is this is actually a train light here. Uh, this mask down and through here is a lot of car lights, so I got to make sure they're all going to work. And that's it, you know. Um, Pretty no nonsense. I just kinda you just gotta know where to go and where everything is. Okay, I'm underneath the fire scene right here. And the fire scene is uh really filled with a lot of intricate uh little mechanisms to make everything work. This thing that hangs down right here is actually the uh unit that I built to make the ladder go up, then the man go up. And then the uh, the man actually chops, and it uses three different motors. It uses a lot of little limit switches, like here. Here's a motor. There's a motor here on the other side, and then there's a motor down here at the very bottom. And the bottom, this little bottom motor, is the one that runs the uh, guy that's actually chopping, you know, his arm. And uh, it just uses a series, like I said, of, of limit switches. It once it the unit, the, the piece gets to a certain spot, it stops, and then it reverses after a time. Uh, this unit up in here is actually the part that brings the man up out of the hole, a hole, and makes him literally drag the hose back along to where he's going, to, where the water's going to squirt in. And again, it uses two motors: one to bring him up out of the hole, and then the other it chain, uh, drives this chain to pull him and the hose back across the yard. Uh, this part of the uh, uh, animation for the, uh, the chopper, uh, the guy going up the ladder, this part, the part over here said, and this wooden piece was added a couple of years after all this was put in here back in 2000. Uh, and the reason is, is because there's a very small limit switch very right down here in the very bottom. And it was out in the open, and uh, I'm gonna get a little light on it. And every time, it just seemed like every time I came underneath the layout, 
I always had to be careful that I wasn't going to run into that little limit switch. And unfortunately, I ran into that limit switch way too many times, broke it off. I'd have to then get all my tools, get them all underneath here, try and repair that little limit switch. So I finally got smart. And I built this with aluminum and piece of wood, nicely sanded off. The corners are nice and uh, rounded. And all that does is it protects that motor, the bottom of the unit, and that limit switch. So that if I'm coming through here at 100 miles an hour on one of these creepers, I don't knock that limit switch off. So that has actually been a nice little lifesaver. But you know, you don't you don't think of those things as you're building, or you don't think of those things even for a while until after you're in the situation, and then it's too late. So I had, that was an afterthought. So the um, this piece up here is the reservoir into which, when the water shoots in, it actually collects into a funnel into here and then runs down this tube back here to a two-gallon bucket that has a submergible pump in it. The pump runs and it actually shoots, brings the water up and the water goes up into this tube and out through this piece here and then shoots into the fire or into, yeah, into the house. The chain over here on the side, back up in here, is the is the fire truck. Uh, there's there's a couple of gears, and you can see uh, where this, I don't know if you can hopefully you can see the sprockets that actually bring the the uh, the fire truck off the road. You know, and it makes it go off to the side of the road. Uh, like I said, I wanted to add that because I thought that would make a a, a neat little uh, addition. So that's the fire, that's the uh, the fire scene. Well, that concludes uh, our under the layout tour. If uh, anybody has any specific questions or something they would really like to see, just drop us a note or put it onto our Facebook page, and uh, we'll be more than happy to go underneath, you know, and do some more filming. Uh, yeah, we love to show you what we what, what's going on here. I needed new fencing for around the Ferris wheel that I'm going to repaint. Uh, so I made a jig and I'm going to show you how I make these fences. Um, this is what the fence is going to look like when it's finished. Um, and it's going to get painted and, uh, and then I'll be able to put it on the layout. The, the, the model that I used, the original, was one that I picked up at a, uh, a train show one time. I picked up a little pack of these and these are actually made out of a, a lead-based material. And rather than buy uh, a whole bunch of them, I thought, you know what, I can make my own. So I used this one as my pattern. And uh, like I said, what I did first was I made one out of wire and then I made a jig uh, using the wood, this wood and these nails. And these are actually nails that I cut off. Uh, so it's a bending jig for my brass rod that I'm going to use. And I use KNS number 162, which is a 1 16th inch brass rod. And that's what uh, the whole thing is made out of. And we're going to get to it, and I'll show you how I do it. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my soldering iron on, and I use a, a Weller little station. And I got it up a little bit higher than I normally do for my electronics uh, soldering because this is brass rod, so it's going to take a little bit more heat. So what I do is I first, I put my brass rod in to my first part of my jig. Now, my line that I drew for my ground is actually right here. So I want one of the legs of the fence a little bit longer so that when I'm done with these, I can just drill a 1 16th inch hole and drop them down into that hole. So one of the legs, I don't want to do two of them because then I got to make sure that I got two holes in the layout that's ex that are exactly right. So one hole is plenty. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to bend it around here. And then bend it around this one. Take it out, make sure it's nice and straight.
And then I'm going to just take my uh, little flush cut nippers and I'm going to cut it off. But when I cut it off, I'm going to cut it off right at that, what I call my ground line, which is right here. Okay, now that just gives me the top part of the fence without the rungs in it. So I've made a couple of them here. All right. Um, now what I'm going to do is, after I get a bunch of these made, I actually had to make had to make about 24 of them. I'm going to drop that back into my jig again. Now I'm going to do a lot of soldering here with a lot of of uh, soldering flux. So I'm going to use my uh, fume extractor. I'm hoping it doesn't make too much noise, but what that does is it sucks all the uh, solder fumes up through a filter, and I use that a lot when I'm, when I'm especially when I'm going to do a lot of soldering. So what I'm going to do first is uh, cut my my bottom rung, lay it up against that side using my cut my nippers again. I'm going to cut it. Now I'm going to take a file and file a little sharp edge off. Make sure it's going to fit. Okay. Now once I got it fit, so it fits in there. Turn my extractor on. Grab my solder, put a little bit of solder, flux, I use no corrode flux, onto my solder, heat up my brass rod, And I got my first piece in. Okay, now I'm going to take my brass rod again. And I have my lines across, the, across this piece of wood. They're probably hard for you to see, but they're right across here. So I can, I can just lay my brass rod along that line. Measure. File up a little sharp edge. And there's my first one. Now I'm going to make a whole. I made a whole bunch of those, so I, I'm, I'm going to need like 24 of these to go around my uh, Ferris wheel. So I'm going to get uh, working on these, and I'll get these done, and I'll show you what comes next. All right, so I made 24 of these little fence pieces, and uh, after I got done with them, I actually took them and washed them really good. I used a uh, brass wire brush and actually some lava soap and scrubbed the heck out of this thing uh, made sure they were good and dry took a file filed off any of the rough edges of the solder that I made and then I actually washed them in acetone uh, that took off any of the soap scum I took off any extra dirt that was laying around on the on the wire because I don't need all that for when I'm going to paint them all right, so then what I did was I, I stopped at, uh, it was either, I'm not sure where these came from. These are either from Joanne Fabrics or AC Moore or maybe Michaels. These are, these little round things are actually little beads. And uh, what I had to do is I had to drill, a, it had a, a hole in the bottom of the bead, but the hole wasn't quite the right size. So I drilled each one of these out to a sixteenth of an inch. Now that's going to be my base for, or my fake base. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide one of those on this end, and I'm going to put one on the other end. Now the one on the short end goes right down to, so that the wire itself goes right down to the base. Just like that. 
All right. Now, I drilled a 16th inch hole in my piece of wood here, laid a piece of, of uh, wax paper down so my glue doesn't uh, make my uh, everything stick. And I'm going to drop that down in to that hole. Now, I'm going to push that little base down until it reaches the piece of wood. Now, I'm going to basically have a level piece of uh, a fence with two little bases on it. I'm going to take my super glue, which I probably really wouldn't need, but I'm going to use it anyway. Drop a little super glue on. And I'm going to do the same thing to another one. Drop a little glue on. Okay, now I'm going to do this for all 24 of these. Then we're going to get to painting them. So, get them done. I'm going to uh, I'll have to prime them. I'll, I'll use an automotive metal paint primer first. And then I'm going to hand paint. I'll, I'll, I'll spray paint them white. And then I'm going to paint a, a, a red bar and a blue bar. So I got red and white and blue fencing. I'm on top of the layout again. And I'm here at the Guernsey farm that is just to the left of the fire scene, if you've been here before. And uh, this scene here is really an original scene. It's been here. The buildings my dad built back in 1961, the two f barns. And actually, the farmhouse itself, he built back earlier than that. He built that back probably in the early 50s. And it was actually two houses instead of one house. And when he brought it, the display up here to the Choo Choo Barn, he decided to put the two houses together and make one bigger farmhouse. The, the glass itself is actually really glass. And he used lace, I think probably from my mom, a slip of, oh, an old slip of my mom's. And that's what he made the uh, curtains out of. So that farm has been painted, I think, about twice since it's been on here. But this is all going to get a redo. I mean, I'm going to re-landscape this whole section with new trees, new bushes, new grass. Uh, probably add some more people. And another thing that I'm doing is, I we used to have, this was a, a little fenced air, in area for uh, a pasture for the cows. And I... Uh, took the old fencing out that was in here and decided to put new fencing in. So uh, what I did was I took eighth inch dowel rod and I painted it white and then cut them into little lengths so I can make my little posts. So I've already started here and I'll show you how I'm doing that. Um, what I do is I made this jig and the jig I have a mark here at 10 feet, which is two and a half inches in quarter inch scale. So what I do is I lay my jig down on the layout. That marks off 10 feet. At that 10 foot spot, I'll drill an eighth inch hole. And it really doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter if, if it's not absolutely perfect and straight, because fence posts around here are usually not perfectly straight. I'm going to dab a little bit of glue on it. Stick my fence post in that hole. Then I want to take the little jig that I built, and I put this little piece of wood here at the at, a, at one inch, and one inch is a four foot high post. I take the little jig, push down on the top of that post, and when I, when this bottom part hits the ground, my pole it, my post is in four feet. done a lot of landscaping up here in the middle of the display and it's time to now get down here back onto this onto my farm where I've done a lot of grassing and 
uh, I built a new fence. I, have, I still have to finish the fence. But I'm going to work on the, on the little cornfield and the uh, vegetable field that I started. So what I, what I did was I um, made a graph on paper using our printer, you know, and you actually used Excel. And I have to drill a lot of holes for a lot of corn stalks. These are my corn stalks. Again, these are the JTT corn stalks, and they are absolutely beautiful little corn stalks. But it's going to take me a lot of these little corn stalks. So I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'll show. We're going to talk about how, to, how I'm cheating a little later. But what I, all I had to do, and this is just an amazing amount of time, because I've already done a whole bunch of them, and it's unbelievable amounts of time that I had to drill a hole in each one of the intersections of my lines. So I'm going to do that practically this whole graph paper. And uh, then after I get that done, I'll have to vacuum up all the drillings because uh, that's all underneath here. And then I'm going to plant my corn. This is going to be my cheater corn field. Um, these are, again, these are the little corn stalks. But I'm going to need a lot of these little corn stalks. So rather than, you know, have, having to purchase a lot of the corn stalks, what I thought of doing is cheating in the middle or in between a couple of different stalks. So I have these flowers which I've been using in other areas of the layout which I had said before came on big long pieces of wire uh, that I got from the craft warehouse in, in Blue Bowl, Pennsylvania and I thought that maybe I could possibly use these. So I sat down and I started trimming all these off and putting them into a bin according to color. That way now when I go to uh, put some flowers out of the house I've already got them in color. But then I thought, I can possibly use these. So I sat down and decided, okay, let's, let's start trimming and see what I can come up with. I didn't want this big thick thing at the bottom, so I cut that off. And I had to trim a couple of pieces here. Okay. So there we go. We end up with a fake corn stalk in a fake cornfield. This is not the best way to work on anything, but this is going to have to be the way I'm going to have to work on this because I tried it the other way by bending down, and bending down wasn't working either. This has got to be one of the most tedious things I've ever done on this train display in the 50 years that I've been involved. I drilled all these little holes, and I've got to now take all these little corn stalks and stick them in the hole. But what happened was, uh, there's, there's regular window screen underneath this plaster, and then there's a thin shell. I said it's it's about probably about an eighth to a quarter of an inch of plaster that I put on top of that window screen. Well, unfortunately, I have a feeling, and I didn't go underneath to look, that when I was doing my drilling, as I was poking the drill down through the plaster, it didn't necessarily drill through the screen. It poked and pushed the screen away from the plaster. So now I got to contend with the the screen that's underneath the plaster keeps pushing the corn stalk back up again and don't want to stick right. But I'm not going to get down underneath and redo this whole thing. So I'm going to mess with this and I'm going to get this right and I'm hoping like heck that the effect is worth all this work because it is not fun. So here we go. One stalk at a time. And as you can see, I'm trying to intersperse the fill-in stalks as I go along. I have small stalks, fill-in stalks for the ends because of the fact that on a cornfield, the outside never grows as long as the inside, as high as the inside.
Okay, I got the roof done on uh, Dutch Wonderland here. Uh, I actually ended up only putting two coats of the stones on because after I put the first coat on, I just took my glue mixture and uh, brushed it over top of the stones that were there, even though they weren't all stuck on. And then after I got that on, then I sprinkled the second coat on top, uh, let that get hard overnight, and picked off the little pieces that uh, don't belong in certain spots. And I feel that I'm done with that, with the roofing. Uh, I had these two little air conditioning units that we actually had in our hobby shop. Uh, they're actually for HL. They were to load for a flat car, but I thought they looked like air conditioning units, so I, I glued those to the very top here, too. So now what I'm doing is I'm working on the windows, and I, what I had done is I had, uh, in Microsoft Publisher, I designed a lattice-style window. I don't know if this is very plain, but this is printed on regular paper. I printed it out using our laser printer at work on a piece of clear acetate so that it gives uh, the uh, the shine. Now, if, uh, you know, the shine of like, of like glass. So, but after I'm done gluing this on, I'm going to take a piece of paper and I'm going to cover the backs the whole way through here so that the light you can't see inside the building. It'll just look like um, a, a white inside. And uh, so I'll tell you, I have this as a PDF on my computer. And if you really would like to have a sheet of this, you can just email us at info at choochoobarn.com and I'll be more than happy to email one of these back to you. Uh, it's, again, it's a PDF file, so most everybody has you know, a, a PDF or has Adobe on their computer. So now all you have to do is you can print it out on white paper or you can, if you have access to uh, a laser printer or even a, an inkjet printer, you can buy clear acetate and print it onto that and then cut it up and use it as window material. Again, that email address was info at choochoobarn.com. All you got to do is say, hey, send me a sheet of that paper. But anyway, I decided to use Walther's Goo as my uh, glue of choice here. Um, and all I'm doing is running a bead around the window inside on the on the wood on the ball on the boss wood itself making sure that the clear that the uh, the, the, the uh, glossy side is on the outside placing that window on there and that'll stick and then I do the second one the next one and actually, I can I can actually um, glue a couple of these at the same time. Okay, so there we go. With those six windows, so I'll finish the rest of these windows. I have uh, I think it's 37 windows to do, so I'll finish all 37 windows. Then I'm going to cover, like I said, then I'll cover the whole back with white paper, just regular old white paper. And uh, my windows will be done, and I'm, the only thing I'll have to do then is I'm going to add a little porch coming out the back here. I'll repaint all the white, and I think Dutch Wonderland Castle will be just about done then.
what I wanted to do is I wanted to make a treehouse, but I wanted the treehouse to actually look like kids build it. So I started that first. This is the second version. First version ended up being too small, but what I did was I took odd sized boards, different, different painted boards, and I made a treehouse. Okay? Then I made the roof, and the roof is actually made of basswood. Then I covered it with uh, uh, some aluminum foil, and then I made it look rusty like it was old uh, corrugated roofing. And uh, I used a JTT scenery tree because this tree is a very open tree, and it's made of with uh, using a, uh, a twisted wire, so it's really fairly easy to work with. But I added a base to it down here so that it would look like it actually you know, was in the ground right. Um, I first mounted the tr the treehouse onto the tree, and this treehouse is actually made so I can I can literally take it apart if I have to. It's made with the two sides are screwed together. All the mechanics inside uh, are are screwed in rather than glued in. And uh, what I wanted to try and, and, and recreate was a kid that kids that made the treehouse, and now they're trying to get the dog up into the treehouse. So I have. Uh, uh, the, little, the little beagle, which is actually uh, representative of the beagle we used to have, uh, that my kids had. And uh, a little boy down here at the end of the rope, and he's going to pull Kibbles, who would, that's the name of our dog, uh, up into the treehouse, into the bottom of the treehouse. Now, there's a little added bonus on this one, because as he goes up, there's a little kid that actually sticks his head and arms down below the treehouse. Uh, to come after the dog. Now, I used a different mechanism on this one. I'm going to show you how this works in a minute, but I used a different mechanism on this on this one. I, I never did this before. All my back and forth mechanisms have used a cam. This one does not use a cam. This one uses a series of rollers, and as the roller, as this turns around, okay, it pushes this little wheel, this this arm up and down, and it's spring loaded, so it constantly pushes back down. That's and the same thing on this side. This side is the one here to here and up that makes the boy go back and forth. So it's only going to travel about an inch. So my travel, my my indent that's cut into here can only be a half inch. So um, it, it's a whole thing with uh, algebra and trigonometry. Finally, my math in high school pay, is paying off. Um, the same thing with then the 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 guy that's coming out. That doesn't go very far. So I had to make those arms shorter and smaller. And I drew everything out on a piece of graph paper first, and and saved it. So. Um, it really came out fairly well. The only thing it's not, there's two things that are not onto this yet. And I have a, uh, a little ladder that I'm going to put up against this tree to kind of to try and hide my wire. And then I also made a little rope ladder that will hang down here just for effect. And when you're going to view it, you're going to view it from this side. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to plug it in and uh, give you a little peek here at, at how this is going to work. And then I'm going to pull it up out of there so you can actually see the mechanism working. So here we go. Okay, now if you look, if you look, the little boy goes back and forth. But he doesn't just go back and forth. He stops. And then he goes a little bit. And then he comes down, back, back. And then he's just, he's going to kind of, it's like he's running and doesn't know what to do. Now, in the air, now he goes back again. So you can see that it's not just a back and forth motion, that it's back and forth, and then he'll stop and he'll pause, and then he'll come the whole way back, and then the dog goes down to the ground again. Now, in the meantime, there's a guy up in underneath the tree house, and you can see that he's going to come down to grab the dog. And again, that's the same thing. He doesn't just up and down and out. It's every now and then. Kind of, it almost looks random. Now you can see it working. I'll take it out of here. And you can see how everything works.
Now, like I said, this is the first time I ever built this kind of a mechanism. So one thing, A, is I'm anxious to see how long it lasts. I have been running it in my workshop, but uh, that's not going to be the test of time. I had to put these two braces on here because there was a lot of torque on this motor and on with this with these arms and these springs and I had to be able to make these two down pieces here stationary so I actually ended up having to re-engineer a little bit